when a family is evicted, it destroys a family, it can break up a family, taking them apart, not knowing where they're gonna go or where they're gonna stay. Now, the first two episodes of Leaving Home have been quite powerful. I know this is a project that's been near and dear to your heart for quite a while. Tell me about starting this uh, series of short documentary films. Okay, well, firstly, this series follows the experience of a family in Woodstock that were evicted by developers to make way for a luxury high-end apartment building that's going up where Mandy's on Main used to stand on Victoria Road. Um, the inspiration came originally, what is today the manifestation of the first episode, to try and track the difficulties that a family has trying to find alternative accommodation when they're forced to leave a home in which they've lived in Woodstock. We know, of course, the property prices, rentals, rates, and all of the associated expenses have skyrocketed in Woodstock. And what essentially was originally a poor working class colored and black community is being besieged by these raising rentals. We wanted to bring home the human impact and the cost to a family through telling a single story that stands in for a broader phenomenon and a blemish really on the track record of development and exclusion that we, the exclusionary type of regeneration that we've seen in the, the inner city and surrounds. Tell me about the Jacobs family. When did you first meet them? What happened in the Jacobs case is they got a payout of an of a undisclosed amount of money, which they accepted from Swiss Properties. Their Wendy house was the last thing standing in the way of this big development going on. So as soon as the settlement came through, and we saw that in episode two, the bulldozers moved in, the family had to move within a very short amount of time. And the money that, any money really often, any settlement that you reach, is not going to be sustainable in the long term for you to be able to stay there. I imagine following the Jacobs family um, was quite an emotional journey. Tell me, tell me about that journey and following this, this story for the purpose of the four episodes. It's never easy to walk along with somebody and to experience, to see what they're going through. But I think the process of mutual support and the process of vocalizing and, and amplifying your experience and to speak on behalf not of yourself only but of other families going through the same thing. I hope for the subjects, for the people that worked with us on this documentary, for the family, the Jacobs family particularly, that it was an experience which felt as though they were contributing to this very important conversation that this documentary is hoping to foster and inevitably the personal relationships around working on a project like this become incredibly close and bringing somebody or for people that this campaign is supposed to serve, for people to feel ownership of the campaign, of the messaging and of their voice in the campaign is something that we felt very strongly about and I think to a greater or lesser degree we've tried to achieve and I guess it's up to the viewers and up to Cheryl Jacobs and her family to make the final assessment of whether that was successful or not. What do you hope the viewers take away from these uh, four episodes? A story like this is not received passively uh, that people are moved and spurned to action and to supporting in their own communities in their own ways um, in ways that they know be better than we can how to support the, 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 the principle and the premise of an inclusionary city and affordable housing protection development and expansion in the inner city and surrounds. Aren't we repeating the same mistake whilst we haven't solved the past mistake?